Stalling. A stall is a condition where it is not possible to maintain controlled flight at a given altitude and airspeed. Consider the pressure distribution around an airfoil at increasing angles of attack. A region of low pressure on the upper surface increases and moves towards the leading edge, whilst the higher pressure region on the lower surface becomes larger. As angle of attack is increased even further, the resulting adverse pressure gradient causes the boundary layer to separate. As angle of attack is increased up to the stall angle, the separation point gradually moves towards the leading edge. When the stall angle is exceeded and flow breaks away from the upper surface of the aerofoil, this leads to a drastic reduction of lift and an increase in drag. Centre of pressure CP movement. As the angle of attack increases, the centre of pressure moves forward and reaches its most forward point just before the stall angle. As angle of attack is increased still further, the centre of pressure then moves rearwards. The rearward movement of the centre of pressure generates a nose pitch down moment, which automatically reduces the angle of attack and aids stall recovery. Buffet. The disturbed weight from the separated airflow behind the wing may strike the tail surfaces, causing aerodynamic buffeting, which may be felt in the controls. Buffet is a warning of impending stall. The degree of aerodynamic buffet depends on the position of the tail surfaces relative to the turbulent wake. Aerofoil sections and CL max. Any aerofoil other than the perfect aerofoil will have a lower CL max. CL max and stall angle depend on the following. Thickness to cord ratio, camber, aerofoil noise radius, aerofoil nose radius, cordwise location of points of maximum thickness and camber, and sharpness of the trailing edge. The effect of flap extension. For a given angle of attack there is an increase in lift and also drag. The centre of pressure moves aft as flaps are lowered and there is a decrease in the stalling angle of attack. Wing stall. The effect of wing planform on the stall. For a rectangular planform, the wing root reaches the stall first. The ailerons are located close to wing tip and may therefore retain their effectiveness even though the wing has stalled. Tapered planform. The central area of the wing stalls first on a moderately tapered planform. If highly tapered, the tip will tend to stall first. Swept planform. The tips stall first. Wing tip stall. Airflow along the upper surface of a swept wing flows towards the tip. As the angle of attack increases, boundary layer separation begins at the wing tip and may lead to pitch up characteristics at the stall as the centre of the pressure of the wing moves forward. Modifications to avoid wing tip stall. Washout. There's a lower angle of attack at the tip than at the root. Vortex generators. These are strategically placed along the wing to re-energise the boundary layer. Stalling strip. This forces the stall to begin at the wing root, for example on the PA38. Preventing spanwise flow. Swept wing modifications to avoid tip stall. The wing fence prevents spanwise flow towards the tip. Vortilons or sawtooth leading edge produce a vortex which delays separation on the outer wing. The effect of ice, slipstream, ground effect on stall. Ice causes the stall to occur at a lower angle of attack by altering the aerofoil shape producing skin friction drag. Propeller slipstream delays boundary layer separation in areas where the wing is affected by the slipstream. In a low speed, high power configuration, it may result in a lower stalling speed compared to an idle power situation. Ground effect. A wing in ground effect generates more lift at a given angle of attack than out of ground effect. However, the value of seal max achieved by the wing does not change. Therefore, the stall occurs at a lower angle of attack. Stalling speed. The stall occurs when the angle of attack is greater than the stall angle, irrespective of speed or aircraft attitude. At the stall, lift equals CL max half rho V squared S. Therefore, stalling speed is directly related to lift. 
Stalling indicated airspeed remains nearly constant with altitude. There is a small increase at very high altitudes. Stalling TAS increases with increasing altitude. At the stall, assume that lift equals weight. For an aircraft which stalls at weights W1 and W2, the value of CL max will be the same in both cases. Solving for stalling speed in the second situation gives a stalling speed directly related to the square root of the two weights under consideration. An easier way of remembering this is Vs new equals Vs old multiplied by the square root of the new weight over the old weight. Assume an aircraft weighs 1,350 pounds and we go to an all-up weight of 1,670 pounds. If the original stalling speed was 48 knots, what is the new stalling speed? Divide 1,670 pounds by 1,350 pounds and take the square root of that answer. Then multiplied by 48, which was the old stalling speed, to find the new stalling speed of 54 knots. Changes in stalling speed with weight. For a small change in weight, the percentage increase in stalling speed is approximately half the percentage increase in weight. For example, if the percentage increase in weight is 20%, the percentage increase in stalling speed is approximately 10%. VMD and other significant speeds are fixed fractions of Vs. Therefore, small changes in weight affect these speeds in a similar manner. For example, a 10% increase in weight results in a 5% increase in stalling speed and VMD. An aircraft weighing 30,000 kilograms has a stall speed of 110 knots. What is the stall speed of the aircraft if the weight is increased to 50,000 kilograms? Divide 50,000 kilograms by 30,000 kilograms and take the square root of the answer. Then multiply this by the old stalling speed of 110 knots to find 142 knots as the new stalling speed. Factors affecting stalling speed. Factors which increase VS with regard to wing loading are a higher weight, a higher load factor, maneuvers and turbulence. The position of centre of gravity, if forward, will increase Vs. Vs will increase with power off and CL will be increased with ice and contamination on the wing surfaces. Conversely, decreased stalling speed occurs with lower weights and load factors and aft CG, power on and the use of high lift devices. Wing loading and load factor. Wing loading is equal to aircraft weight divided by wing area. When weight increases, wing loading increases, causing the stalling speed to increase. Load factor N equals lift divided by weight, or one over cosine of the bank angle. An increase in load factor influences the wing loaded in the same way as an increase in weight. Stalling speed increases in proportion to the square root of load factor. Vs under the new condition will equal Vs under the 1G environment multiplied by the square root of the load factor. Variation of stalling speed. Stalling speed in a turn, Vs turn or Vs new equals Vs in the 1G environment multiplied by the square root of 1 of the cosine bank angle. As the bank angle changes, the stalling speed will also change. With an increased bank angle it will increase, and with a decreased bank angle it will decrease. Stall recognition. Low speed stall is usually preceded by natural stall warnings. Less effective controls, buffet onset felt as a vibration. High speed stall due to high load factor is not preceded by loss of control effectiveness. Buffet may be the only prior indication of stall. Stall warning devices are fitted to most aircraft and are activated by sensors which measure angle of attack. A flapper switch is fitted at the leading edge just after the stagnation point at normal angles of attack encountered in flight. An angle of attack vane or an angle of attack probe may also be used. Stall recognition recovery. 
A stick shaker is an artificial form of stall warning fitted to large aircraft. A motor causes the stick to vibrate at a frequency which mimics aerodynamic buffet. It may be accompanied by an audible warning. A stick pusher initiates stall recovery by pushing the control column forwards. Stall warning circuits may receive information about aircraft configuration, as this can vary stall angle, for example flaps. The standard stall recovery is to reduce the angle of attack to well below the stalling angle and use full power to minimise loss of altitude. Manoeuvre and power on stalls. A manoeuvre stall, G stall, occurs when load factor is so high that the stall angle of attack is exceeded. It can occur at any speed. Stall speed is lower in a power on stall due to a vertical component of thrust. Stalls in the turn. Stall in a slipping turn, the outer wing stalls first. Stall in a skidding turn, the inner wing stalls first. If the aeroplane is rolling clockwise viewed by the pilot and the aeroplane yaws to the left, it assumes a crab-like attitude relative to the wind. This is called a slip. The air is flowing crosswise over the fuselage. In order to correct this adverse slip, the pilot must apply right rudder in this example. If the pilot applies too much rudder, the aeroplane will then slip to the other side and the balance ball will move to the side of the raised wing. This is called a skid. The skid is dangerous if the aeroplane is close to a stall. In the slip, the raised wing, the left one if the aeroplane is turning to the right, will stall before the lowered one and the aeroplane will bank naturally to mitigate the stall. In the skid, the lowered wing stalls before the raised one and the aeroplane tightens the turn and the stall can develop into a spin. Stalls in climbing and descending turns. In the climb, the outer wing stalls first. The inner wing describes a steep upward spiral and more air comes down to meet it, reducing its angle of attack. The upper wing has a higher angle of attack and travels round at a higher velocity, increasing its lift. In the descent, the inner wing stalls first. The inner wing describes a steep downward spiral and more air comes up to meet it, increasing its angle of attack. The upper wing travels round at a higher velocity, increasing its lift, but the inner wing may more than compensate for this. The dynamic stall. This occurs at a higher critical angle of attack than that at which the aerofoil normally stalls. Consider a wing which is exposed to a very sharp vertical gust. There is a sudden increase in the angle of attack and lift, therefore load factor increases. A higher load factor than planned may be reached at a given speed. This is particularly important when flying in turbulent conditions, as the aircraft may inadvertently be overstressed. The super stall. The super stall, deep stall, is a stable stalled condition at an almost constant pitch attitude. The turbulent weight from the wing's fuselage flows over the tailplane and it loses its efficiency. There is not enough elevator control to lower the nose and the aircraft is locked in to a very high angle of attack situation. The aircraft sinks rapidly and this is accompanied by a further increase in angle of attack. Ways to avoid super stall. Minimise flow separation near the tips of swept wings with wing fences or vortex generators. Utilising a stick pusher reduces the maximum angle of attack which may otherwise lead to a super stall. Lift augmentation modification. Modern aircraft need to be capable of flying at fast speeds in the cruise and low speeds for landing on short runways. However, a wing which is suitable for low speed flight will be inadequate for high speed flight and vice versa. The solution is to use lift augmentation devices which can be extended for low speed flight and retracted for flight at high speeds. Lift equals seal half row V squared S. At low speeds, lift can be increased by devices which increase camber, CL, improve the boundary layer, CL, increase wing area, S. At a given speed, lift depends on CL and S. Trailing edge devices. Trailing edge devices produce more lift at a lower angle of attack than a clean wing by increasing wing camber. Flap deflection increases drag and because of this, stalling angle normally decreases. Circulation around the wing increases and the centre of pressure also moves aft. 
leading edge devices. Leading edge devices improve the boundary layer, i.e. re-energize it so that a higher stall angle is achieved. There will be increases in lift and drag. The center of pressure moves forward and there may be a small pitch up moment. Slots and slats. High pressure airflow from the lower surface is accelerated through a convergent slot into the faster airflow on the upper surface. Leading edge flaps increase camber of the leading edge, allowing a higher angle of attack. There is no slot between lower and upper surfaces. Note that it is possible to have a combination of leading edge flaps and slats on a wing. Spoilers. Spoilers have three functions. They increase drag in flight as speed brakes, reduce lift after landing as lift dumpers, and assist the ailerons in roll control as roll spoilers. The effect of high lift devices on performance. Using flaps on the takeoff reduces ground roll and lift off speed, but reduces the climb gradient. Using flaps on the approach to land reduces approach speed and allows a steep approach angle. However, a go around is necessary. The extra drag from the flaps will mean that they will have to be raised. Controlled vortices. Controlled vortices improve the airflow of the wing at very high angles of attack. Air in the vortex circulates around the core at a very high velocity. The surrounding air is energized and a higher angle of attack is reached before separation. A highly swept wing can therefore reach a higher than expected angle of attack without stalling. Vortex generators take undisturbed air from above the boundary layer into the low energy turbulent boundary layer, therefore re-energizing it. This gives a higher angle of attack before the stall. Ice and contamination. Ice and contamination degrades the lift to drag ratio. Ice buildup is normally greatest on frontal areas. Ice causes the stall to occur at a lower angle of attack, altering the shape and skin friction drag. There's a reduction in CL max. The aerodynamic effect of ice located on the wing leading edge is most critical during the last part of the rotation. Horizontal stabilizers are prone to stall too. Heavy rain reduces seal max and increases drag.